This video is sponsored by Manscaped, the premier brand in men's grooming. Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The Estadio do Dragao will be the stage as two English titans prepare to face off for honours in the Champions League final. It will also see two of the finest managerial minds face off in Thomas Tuchel and Pep Guardiola. City will be confident, having already sewn up two trophies, but Tuchel's Chelsea have beaten City twice in recent weeks. But what tactics could we potentially see these two great managers use? In this video, we take a look. As you know, I'm a big fan of Guardiola, but I'm also a massive fan of Tuchel. But there is one thing that separates these two brilliant managers, one thing that Tuchel could do to get to Pep's level. If Tuchel could just... just... There we go, now that's a manager ready to win the Champions League, and he could do that using today's video sponsor, Manscaped, with their brand new Lawnmower 4.0 taking care of all your grooming requirements. <laughs> On a serious note though, Manscaped is today's sponsor, and they have you covered for all your grooming needs. Their high quality trimmers are excellent for shaving above the belt and below the belt, and even have dedicated trimmers for nose and ear hair, as well as so much more. The best part is because you're watching this video, you can get 20% off and free shipping by clicking the link below and using the offer code FMS when you check out. It will save you 20% and help to support the channel. Now, let's start with the potential formations. With Tuchel, there is unlikely to be any surprise, as he will probably use a hybrid 343 or 352 that will look like this. The only slight question mark is whether it will be Aspel Equator, Christensen or James at right centre back and whether it'll be James or Aspel Equator at right wing back. Mount and Werner will probably form two of the front three, with Ziyech or Havertz taking up the final slot. Pep City can use a number of different formations, but in this video we'll focus on three possibilities, the 4-4-2, the 4-3-3, as well as the 3-5-2. Let's first look at what Chelsea could do in possession against City if they use the 4-4-2. Chelsea will look to build up short, particularly if Werner starts. Havertz offers more aerial presence, but still, Chelsea have generally looked to build up short, particularly down the right, as if Aspel Equator is the right centre-back, he tends to move to the right-back slot, with Silva and Rudiger splitting wide, whilst James pushes even higher. This will be difficult for City to defend in their 4-4-2, as if the front two are narrow on the goal kick, looking to cover the centre-backs, Aspel Equator will be free to receive. And if City's left winger pushes out to press, they could still be 3 vs 2 down in this dangerous zone, so Chelsea could potentially play through the pivot to get a 2 vs 1 advantage in this deeper area. The City winger could sit off of Aspel Equator, but if City are using a higher line, the man would then have time to pick his head up and look for a pass to utilise the pace of Werner or the movement of the right forward in behind the high line. So, we have seen this season, in the 4-4-2, City are willing to use a mid-block rather than consistently press high. So in more open play, it'll be interesting how or if City look to press. They could deliberately look to filter Chelsea to one side by cutting off a passing lane to the wide centre-back using the forward's cover shadow. This will help compensate for being 3 vs 2 down in this phase, as by cutting off a centre-back whilst pressing a man, things have essentially been evened up. But when they have been facing two-man front lines, we have often seen Chelsea push Rudiger higher up, almost as a left-back, to be the option to escape this pressure. But generally, if the first line of pressure is bypassed through the centre, they will have major problems. As we saw in their FA Cup semi-final clash, City's pivots have generally looked to press man-to-man, -man, and this could create space between the lines for one or both of Chelsea's wingers to drop into. More likely, the front three will switch to a 1-2, with Mount deeper to receive, whilst the two forwards pin the centre-backs deeper, and this could spell serious danger for the citizens, as if a centre-back then looks to close him down, a man could be played through. If they sit off of him, he can look for a chip ball into the run of the wing-back, or even Conte, who makes great third-man runs from midfield. Or he can look to have a shot. But in the FA Cup clash, we saw City look to pressure all three centre-backs to make progression harder. This was because out wide, they have an extra man in this default shape, so, either winger can push up to press, forming a lopsided 4-3-3. But there could be a potential problem here for City, as if the wingback is able to receive, the shape will once again become a front 5, with Mount moving back into the half space, so the City defence will essentially be 4 vs 5 down. So if City's fullback looks to close a man down, the man in the half space will be free to receive, and look to attack the byline, or cut infield, 
or even play a man into the box. If the City fallback tucks in instead, the Chelsea wingback can go for the cross. So instead, City could essentially use their front two to cover the Chelsea pivots, allowing their own pivots to drop deeper and cover zone 14, which might nullify Chelsea higher up. And although Rudiger would push high up when unmarked, City would prefer the centre-back getting time on the ball than Chelsea getting men between the lines. But what areas could City look to exploit using the 4-4-2? We have seen Chelsea look to press high at times, but generally they shift to a front two, with Mount tucking in deeper to cover a pivot. So City could split their centre-backs wide and the full-backs who push higher up could be the outlets when the Chelsea wing-backs are tied up by the City wingers. If the Chelsea wing-backs did press initially, they would be 4 versus 3 down in the final line, and Edison's long kicking ability means that this could cause them problems. And in open play, in deeper regions, this 2 versus 2 would favour Chelsea when pressing, meaning that each of City's centre-backs is consistently under pressure, making it harder to play out. In deeper regions, Edison could push up to be the third centre-back, whereas higher up, Walker from right-back could tuck in to give them the 3 versus 2 advantage. Walker's positioning here would also be key to dealing with the pace of Werner on the transition. But here is where Chelsea's defensive shape is so strong, as Mount Deeper means that only Conte would have to join the press, and Jorginho is the spare man. And this is crucial, because with City using two false nines, they will often look to drop into midfield, and Jorginho as the spare man could potentially pick one man up, and crucially, Chelsea's wide centre-backs are aggressive in following their men deep, so could pick up the second false nine, making central play difficult. But we saw across the semi-finals against PSG that Bernardo, rather than just dropping central, is also willing to operate in wider regions, in close proximity to Mahrez, almost as a second winger, posing a question to Rudiger of whether he's willing to follow them that wide, potentially leaving space in the backline. And in these scenarios, with Mount Central, Walker can make the move out wide to create a 3 vs 2, and City could then potentially get a runner into a great position for the cutback. The danger, of course, is now City, having moved Walker high, are much more vulnerable to the counter-attack down the right. We could see similar on the left-hand side, with De Bruyne and Zinchenko joining Foden. However, down the left, Foden's ability to play central allows them a different option. Although Zinchenko often operates deeper, mainly looking to progress the ball, as we saw against PSG, when he pushes high, City have a different dimension, as Foden can then tuck in to play as the second false nine given De Bruyne much more freedom as he can now drop deeper into midfield to be the extra man and receive before driving up the pitch. Or he can combine with others to try and create an opening for the shot or to play someone in. But we could see the City of old reverting to a 4-3-3 for a few different reasons. Playing against the 4-3-3, Chelsea can still build with a similar shape as before as they would naturally have the central advantage here. The left winger would then also be 2 versus one down meaning when pressed, either the right centre-back or the right wing-back would be free. But higher up the pitch, the role of City's wingers would be interesting. A more passive approach would be for them to drop deeper to form a 4-5-1. But they could also push higher up to create a 3 vs 3, making it difficult for Chelsea's centre-backs to progress higher up the pitch. And importantly, a dedicated single pivot would be able to pick up men between the lines. But City could still be vulnerable though. As Mount, instead of playing as a 10, could push into the half space, which would spell danger for City, as they would now be 4 versus 5 down. So as discussed, when the wingback received, if he was under pressure, it would mean Mount would be free in the half space to find a forwards run or cut in and have the shot himself. And while City could shift their entire defence across to deal with this, Chelsea could then use a switch effectively to get the opposite side wingback into great space. But the potential benefit of this shape for City comes when they are on the ball. City would still be able to use the fullback as their outlet from the goal kicks. But higher up, City could revert to the shape they used so well in 17-18 to pose more of a threat through the centre. One or both of Zinchenko and Walker could invert alongside the pivot in the first phase, which would then free up Gundogan and De Bruyne to push higher up. So where before Conte and Mount could go man-to-man -man against the pivots, now they will be 3 vs 2 down here, so City can more easily keep possession past the first line of pressure. And where against the 4-4-2, Chelsea had a spare pivot to sweep up behind them, that man would now be 2 vs 1 in this region as well, so one of City's free aids could be found. So generally, City would have a 5 vs 3 advantage in the midfield, 
allowing them to have better possession. And as discussed, the Chelsea centre-backs are aggressive in pressing, which could temporarily even things up, but it does leave a huge hole in the defence. The City forward could then make the immediate run into the space, or a 1-2 could be played for the free 8 to then attack the space. In addition, it also leaves 1 vs 1s out wide, and players as skillful as Mahrez and Foden would be confident of getting past their man at times to then have space. Lastly, City could also use a back 3 to match up to Chelsea. And we did see this in the league game, albeit with a strange first 11. In many ways, Pep may have been trying to get a feel for how this system matches up against Chelsea's without using his best 11. And we did see it have some success. The 11 would have many changes, with Stones in for Ake and potentially Zinchenko for Mendy. The midfield could also be completely changed, with Fernandinho, Gundogan and De Bruyne coming in. The front two on paper will be interesting, but Jesus would probably be one of the forwards, with Bernardo, Mahrez or Sterling being the other. So in open play, City would now have a 3 vs 2 advantage in the first phase, and both Stones and Laporte are excellent at bringing the ball out if all other options are occupied, and could have success in drawing Chelsea's midfielders out to open up room for others. But at the same time, it still gives them a 3 vs 2 advantage against Mount and Conte, allowing them to progress the ball and keep possession at the same time. The league game often saw Rudiger being drawn out of position, trying to close down the free midfielder, but this consistently left space for City's forwards to make dangerous runs. But if the Chelsea centre-backs are more passive, they could face some big problems, as City's midfielders will be able to receive possession between the lines almost unchallenged, from where they can look to make incisive passes into men making dangerous runs. So Chelsea's second pivot could drop deeper instead to even things up in the midfield. But again, with the wide centre-backs pushing higher, City will still be looking to create the numerical advantage in midfield to then get men turned. But we also saw Chelsea have good attacking success when City used this formation. And this was down the flanks, as with a wingback pressing high and a centre-back looking to close down the man in the half space, with City pressing high, it often became a foot race between Werner and the remaining centre-backs, and his pace would allow him to get into dangerous zones. But generally, the back five will make City more solid, allowing man-to-man -man marking if Chelsea use a front five. And if Mount drops deep instead, the dedicated pivot can look to pick him up. Of course, both managers, but Pep in particular, could always spring some surprises on us, but these are just a few of the potential areas to watch out for. But how do you see the match going tactically, and what is your prediction for the final score? Drop it down below. And guys, don't forget to head over to Manscaped through the link below to see what great products they have to offer you, and use the code FMS to get 20% off, and join over 2 million men worldwide who already trust Manscaped. They really do make great products and it helps to support the channel. And if you want even more content whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. And a special thanks to my Patreons including Astra Fauzi and Philip Jorgaston for helping to make this video possible. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.